I like to compare the Dam Queen with a, with a really good wine shop. I mean, you can buy your wine in the supermarket, but if you want a better quality wine, a, a really nice quality wine, you go to a wine shop where the person can explain to you where the grapes came from, where the, you know, and he can bring you to exactly the, 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 the taste you want. We have top qualities and people always leave the house happy, you know. We have about 24 wheat and about 18 hash at the moment. Because the Mexican haze is our pride, our pride wheat, you know, like uh, we're the only ones having it. It's an A5 plant, A5 cross with skunk, which looks like the Mexican, but it has a bit of skunk crossed against it, which is an indica. So it gives you a little warm feeling in the body next to the lovely, amazing eye. This is the Ne uh, the no, Devil's Brew, yeah. it's a very, very strong uh, hybrid. The one, uh, other things we are really proud of, for instance, are the Ceres Hilton. Ceres Hilton is a hybrid, but it's a lovely, lovely sweet smoke. We entered the Ceres uh, Hilton to the Cannabis Cup, and we never win. We never win, you know, it's like, I won't say anything, but it's, it's always won by the same people. Uh, but this time we entered it under a different name. And straight away we got the first prize, you know, so it says something about the cannabis company. You know, the original Dam Queen logo stands for top qualities and the original names, you know, like, like I said, we have beautiful sativas like the A5 plant and the C5 plant, which came from the mid 80s. That's where it all started in Holland with, you know, uh, the growing before that the weed was like spinach, you know, it was big plants with no buds until the Americans came over and started to help out a bit and uh, brought know-how. Candy Kush. Now we are not really big in Kush yet. In the States, obviously, you know, it's a very big plant and there is some shops in town selling it. We are busy trying to set up our own line of Kush so we can also compete in that uh, for that matter. Um, this I like a lot as well, the Grape Ape. This also has some Kush in it. And we have a big variety of hashis. We have some really good Moroccans, like I said, but also the Riffman line makes it special. We have some really nice Nepalese hashis. And we have some really good isolators. This is called the Super Tabisla. This we have on the list, well, since I came working here five and a half years ago. Constant Moroccan quality, very popular among the local smokers. This is Nepalese Temple Balls from Nepal. Very strong. Black smoke, very bodily feeling. I call it couch, couch smoke. Sit at home, watch a movie and you have to watch the end tomorrow again. Because you miss it. We have something from the States. It's called Simpson Kush. Again, it's a shame you can't smell through the camera, you know, but this is so cushy. This is really, for the Kush smokers, a very nice hash. One I like a lot is the Fudge Dog. It's a very soft, Sticky material, very pure, very intense when you smoke it. It's more for the experienced smokers. We have the original strains, you know, which, which I'm really proud of. You know, that every, every name that's on the box is the name of the strain. Well, I want people to get value for their money. And if you, if you, not only the quality is the value, but also the price we offer. I mean, all layers of society come to the shop. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, you see lawyers to dentists uh, to house mothers, uh, it, it, you name it. it. In all layers of society, people smoke marijuana or hashish. Did they find a non-resident in here? I am to be arrested, tried in court, everything is confiscated and of course burned. Nobody is ever going to tell me to, to discriminate because in, in fact we were talking about discriminating people because of the re residency. That in itself is ludicrous. Our government uh, planning to make cannabis with more than 15% THC a hard drug on list one next year. And why keep it under 15%? Why take away the free choice? Why put people in the street if they want to smoke proper marijuana if you can't get it in the coffee shop anymore? They're just trying to find anything they can grab to shut you down. And that's about it. There's no logic of uh, motivation behind it. I never know if I'll, I'll be open next year. And how can you invest in your company if you don't know if you're going to be open next year, you know? And, and what, what I'm going to tell my staff with their mortgages and their kids. And, I think there's about 32 coffee shops closing and 
it, it is uh, it's terrible because a lot of these entrepreneurs they just get kicked out after maybe 25 years or 20 years running a business. Liberty in Holland has gone down the drain.